Actually, NWF GCBA is our association website. I have my own website. It's ibdemandllc.com. <clears throat> As the gentleman just said, my name is Chester Beyer. I've been a beekeeper for 12 years. I founded Northwest Florida Gulf Coast Beekeepers Association here in Navarre. We meet at Station 45, the fire department behind McDonald's. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you today about honeybees. From recent genetic studies, and pardon me, I'm an old person. I'm going to have to read this to you. I can't remember it all. Uh, from recent genetic studies of European honeybees, Aphis mellifera originated in Africa and spread into Europe by at least two ancient migrations. The migrations resulted in two European populations that are geographically close, but genetically quite different. In fact, the two European populations are more related to honeybees in Africa than to each other. <clears throat> That's right, people. Uh, the honeybee is not native to the United States. Um, the first history of honeybees coming into the Americas is 1622. And they were brought in by the European settlers who were used to having honeybees for sugar and for wax and stuff. Let's think about that just a minute. 1622, what was the mode of transportation between Europe and the Americas in 1622? Sailboats. How long did it take for them to get here? Upwards of two months. Can you imagine putting bees on a boat and transporting them over to America and keeping them alive for two months when they can't go out and fly? If you let them fly, when they come back to where they left from, the boat's going to not be there anymore. It's already left from that point. So it's amazing to me that they were even able to get them into the Americas. <clears throat> the Indians called honeybees white man's flies. <clears throat> I guess this is the clicker. Yeah, I don't think that hasn't worked all day. You'll have to do it on the control pad. I'm sorry. Gosh, it makes you wonder how they, uh, how the flowers pollinated before bees you ever got here. There are natural pollinators in the Americas. Okay. Um, Yellow jackets are one. <laughs> uh, bumblebees are another. There's a lot of different pollinators. Bees in the hive consist of these three types. You have your queen. The center one is a drone, which is the male bee. And then you have your worker, which is a female. 98% of the bees in the hive are female. There's only one sexually mature to lay eggs, and that's the queen. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see this picture, but the queen's in the middle there, and as you can see, she's twice as large as the worker bees. The queen is only sexually productive female in the colony. She can lay as many as 1,500 eggs a day. Her body is twice as large as the worker bees because, much of, her lar because of the much larger abdomen. Her mandibles or jaws contain sharp cutting teeth, whereas offsprings have toothless jaws. <laughs> the queen has a curved, smooth stinger that she can use repeatedly. The average lifespan of the queen is from one to three years. Actually, we try to requeen our hives within two years because that's when she's the most productive the first two years. I'm, my voice is going. I've been talking about bees all day long. <laughs> Pardon me. This is the drone bee. <clears throat> Drones are male honeybees. They are stingless, defenseless, and unable to feed themselves. Their only function is to mate with the queen. After mating, which always takes place on the wing, in open air, a drone dies immediately. The queen mates only once in her life with six or more drones. 
the sperm remains viable in a special sac in her abdomen throughout the life of the queen. Drones are prevalent in the colonies of bees in the spring and summer months. As fall approaches, they are driven out of the nest or hive by the workers and left to perish. Drones sit on the couch, drink beer, and have sex. That's all they do. <laughs> Pretty nice life, huh? Workers. The worker bee is the most numerous member in the colony. A healthy colony may contain 80,000 worker bees or more at its peak, growth in early summer. Workers build and maintain the hive and care for the brood. They build the nest from wax secreted from glands in their abdomen. The hexagonal cells or compartments constructed by the workers are arranged in a lattice work known as the comb. <clears throat> the cells are used for storage of developing young bees, honey, pollen, honey and pollen. Workers leave the hive to gather nectar, pollen, water and propolis as a gummy substance used to seal and caulk the exterior of the nest. <clears throat> they convert the nectar to honey, clean the comb, feed the larvae, drones, and the queen. <clears throat> they also ventilate the nest when necessary, defend the colony from, with their stingers. The workers responsible for maintaining the brood at 93 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> the optimal temperature required for hatching the eggs and rearing the young. When the nest or hive become too hot, the workers collectively ventilate it by fanning their wings. During cool weather, they cluster tightly around the nursery and generate heat by flexing their wing muscles. <clears throat> the larvae are fed royal jelly for at least two days, then pollen and nectar or honey. Each of the hundreds of larvae in the nest or hive must be fed many times a day. The worker bees, the worker bee has many tasks and these tasks are divided by age. For the first three weeks of their adult lives, the workers perform nurse activities. At the end of this period, they function as field or guard bees. <coughs> the workers that develop in the spring live about six weeks due to wing muscle failure from frequent flights together nectar and pollen. Worker bees reared in late, late in the fall usually live until spring since they have little to do in the winter except eat and keep warm. <clears throat> and you can see the pollen on its legs, the worker bee, well all the bees have little hair-like uh, things on the backs of their legs and that's what they store the pollen in to bring it back to the nest. <coughs> bee colonies proliferate by dividing. <coughs> when the hive becomes overcrowded with bees, honey, and pollen, the worker bees divide decide to create a new queen. To do this, they select worker cells which contain larvae from one to three days old. <clears throat> then they start filling these cells with royal jelly. Actually, they collect the one to three day old larvae and they build a much larger cell than what is normally in the hive. And they put that larvae in that cell and they fill that cell with royal jelly. Queen is not laid, she's made. Just before the new queen hatches, the old queen takes approximately half of the bees in the hive who gorge themselves in honey and leave the hive. Soon, some of the bees gather around Okay, um, so these bees swarm out and you can see a swarm hanging from this limb right here. Um, and what happens is the queen whose body is twice the size of the worker bee 
but she, her wings are the same size as a worker bee. So she gets tired pretty quick, and she finds a limb to rest on. And when she does, the rest of the bees gather around her to create a swarm that you see here. <coughs> the, the swarm then sends out scouts to find a new home. This can be a hole in a tree or a hole in a house or other suitable structure. They then start the process of comb building, food gathering, and egg laying. Back in the old hive, the first queen to hatch runs around to all the other queen cells before they hatch and kills the queen inside. There can only be one queen. <coughs> the importance The importance of the honeybee. Honeybees have become the primary source of pollination for approximately one third of all the food produced in the United States and other countries. Cornell University stated in a recent, com recently completed study, 2010, the value was directly the the value of directly pollinated crops by honeybees was 16 more. $35 billion, that's in 2010. While the value of the indirectly dependent crops was 12.65. So you got almost $30 billion just in pollination. That doesn't count how much the beekeepers made from selling bees, from selling pollen, from selling honey, wax, and, and the other things. It's pretty, pretty good uh, industry there. Many species of wild pollinators have disappeared from the land as their habitat had been destroyed or altered by humans. The honeybee has taken over as pollinator of many of the wild plants that remain. Its ecological value in this regard is tremendous. Honeybees are the sole source of honey and beeswax, a fine wax with unusual qualities. Honeybees also produce propolis, a gummy substance made from tree sap that has antibacterial properties, <clears throat> royal jelly, and pollen for human consumption. Honeybee venom is extracted from the production of, <laughs> I'm sorry, antivenom therapy. Honeybee venom is extracted for the production of anti-venom therapy and being investigated as a treatment for several serious diseases of the muscles, connective tissue, and immune system, including multiple sclerosis and arthritis. We had a lady in our association who had multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> and they had a couple of beehives and her husband was doing sting therapy on her every day. And she quit, ha she quit having lesions in her brain, which is a form, wow. is, is a thing of multiple sclerosis. So they were able to, to check her brain and find that the lesions had stopped. <clears throat> All right. Medical uses and value of honeybee products. Now, this information comes directly from uh, WebMD and drugs.com. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher some of the diseases in here, but please bear with me. Propolis is a resin type material from the buds of poplar and conical bearing trees. Propolis is rarely available in its pure form. It is usually obtained from beehives and contains bee products. Propolis has a long history of medical uses, dating back to 350 BC, the time of Aristotle. Greeks have used propolis for abscesses. Asinians have used it for healing wounds and tumors. The Egyptians have used it for mummification. It still has many medical uses today, although its effectiveness has only been shown for a couple of them. <clears throat> Propolis is used for canker sores, infections caused by bacteria, 
by viruses including flu, H1N1, swine flu, and the common cold. <clears throat> by fungus and other single-celled organisms called protozoids. Propolis is also used for cancer of the nose and throat <laughs> from bloating of the immune system for boosting the immune system, including Helicobacter pylori infection in peptic ulcer disease. Propolis is also used as an antitoxin and anti-inflammatory agent. People sometimes apply propolis directly to the skin or wound, cleansing, genital herpes and cold sores, or as a mouth rinse and mouth rinse, speeding, healing, following oral surgery, and for other treatments of minor burns. This is not coming from me, folks. This is coming from the websites. So I'm not trying to sell you a product here, telling you what they have to say about it. <coughs> Honey has a long medical history. The ancient Egyptians not only made offerings of honey to their gods, they also used it as embalming fluid and addressing for wounds. <coughs> on that last point, at least, they are on, the, on to something. Today, many people swarm to honey for its antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. Holistic practitioners consider it one of the nature's best all-around uh, remedies. But outside of the lavatory, claims of honey healthfulness are unproven, except in the area of wound care and to a lesser extent, cough suppression. <clears throat> I'm gonna need a little bit more water, folks. <clears throat> Sting therapy. Louise Cheristel Cheristello of Brewster, New York, was suffering intractable pain from her <coughs> two hip replacement operations. She tried to get relief from the strongest <coughs> prescribed painkillers from the physical therapy and from physical therapy, but nothing worked. I was so sore she could not could not touch my hips without crying out, said Cheristello. Then she heard about <coughs> Lawrence Cohen, a doctor in Danbury, Connecticut, who treated terrible pain with venom of ordinary honeybees. At first, Cohen gave the 84-year-old widow several injections of bee venom weekly, but eventually reduced the dose to one injection every two to three weeks. Right after I got the first injection of bee venom, I left his office pain-free. Cheristello says a year later, she is still free of pain and has needed no additional bee venom injections. <clears throat> unproven results, although bee venom therapy is largely an unproven technique, about 50 U.S. physicians report good results using the substance test to treat not only pain, but arthritis conditions, multiple sclerosis, and other health woes. Other practitioners test high blood pressure, treat high blood pressure, asthma, hearing loss, and even premenstrual syndrome with bee venom. <clears throat> bee pollen is a good natural source for drone bees nutritional source for drone bees. It's been described as the nature's perfect food. It is highly concentrated food source containing a complex supply of quality nutrients. A number of traditional Chinese herbal formulas contain bee pollen. It is rich in vitamins, minerals, trace elements, enzymes, and amino acids and contains approximately 30% protein, 55% carbohydrate, and 1-2% to fat, 3% minerals, and trace vitamins. 
Vitamin C concentrations of 3.6% to 5.9% also have been found in some pollen samples. Promotional literature lists about 100 vitamins, minerals, enzymes, amino acids, and other compounds identified in bee pollen. <clears throat> the pathological information of many of these components is poorly understood. Bee pollen preparation often contains mixtures of pollen of diverse types of plants, and these pollens vary with the geographic or origin of the material. Raw jelly. Raw jelly is a milky secretion produced by worker honeybees. It typically contains about 60 to 70 percent water, 12 percent to 15 percent proteins, 10 to 16 percent sugar, 3 to 6 percent fats, 2 to 3 percent vitamins, salts, and amino acids. <clears throat> its composition varies depending on the geography and client, climate. The product gets its name from the fact that bees use it for their development of nursing of queen bees, nurturing of queen bees. Some people use royal jelly as medicine. Don't confuse royal jelly with bee pollen or bee venom. Royal jelly is used for asthma, hay fever, liver disease, pancreatitis, sleep disorders, insomnia, uh, premenstrual syndrome, BMS, stomach ulcers, kidney disease, <coughs> bone fractures, uh, menopausal symptoms, skin disorders, high cholesterol. It is also used as a general health tonic for fighting the effects of aging and boosting the immune system. <coughs> Beeswax is used for lowering cholesterol and for relieving pain. It is also used for swelling, inflammation, ulcers, diarrhea, and hiccups. And that's it, folks. Any questions? <laughs>